So normally with my in the field videos, I just go out, take the picture, and that's it. And I'm very, very conscious of my spots and where I go and not revealing locations. But because it's Sparks Lake and it's such a world-class destination and it's so well known that I'm going to reveal a couple spots to you that I don't think I'm going to have any fear in revealing because it's so well known. So, uh, but keep this in mind, you're not going to find this from a lot of other photographers, especially around here. A lot of people are very protective, I should say, of their spots. So, uh, what you're about to see is pretty rare content. So most of the views that you're going to find at Sparks Lake is along this trail here called the Ray Atkinson Trail. And it kind of goes up along the shore and it goes over to that butte right there. And then just along this little stretch, you get this phenomenal view here. And what makes Sparks Lake so darn unique is that you get two mountains for the price of one. And that's what makes it so popular here. Um, the way to really bring that home is to use foreground compositions and that's exactly what we're going to explore so basically along this trail alone you're going to get composition after composition after composition but it's also very seasonal because take a look at those mountains man completely snow snow white and that's precisely what you need to do is get here pretty much when those mountains have snow on them because without them, they just look like bare rocks. So on the uh, left here, you can see South Sister and Broken Top on the right. So we're going to go down there and see what we can grab. By going down from the trail just a little bit, you can see what we're talking about compositionally. You didn't have to go very far. And then if you keep going down, you can get another really cool composition down here. So really, the key in Sparks Lake, guys, is getting down to the shoreline. And also keep in mind that this little spot here is a jetty. And this jetty is only going to have water in it, I want to say, um, until about July up to, and then it fills again in around end of September. So you have a tight window when you can get water out here on this jetty does offer you quite a bit of compositional material as you can see it's always serene out here though so I think I've picked my composition only because there's no sky today and we want to try to block out as much of it as we can so I really like this composition here with this kind of leading line rock get really close to it and even get it centered in the image so I kind of like that or you can come over here and go down really low and show you guys what I'm talking about here like this which is just enough foreground I think to really add interest especially if we throw on our our roken on our 14 millimeter and there's our composition I think so you can see compositionally what I'm going with here. I've got these really cool foregrounds that I think will work just fine. So what I'm doing is I'm just going to do a panorama. I tried the wide angle, but it's just too far, too far off. I'm going to try to do a panorama. There we go. I think that will work just fine like that. And again, it's not a spectacular sky, but it'll do the job, I think. Yeah, I got that foreground rock there. You want to get him all the way in the frame. You can see what I'm doing. Just panning over, making sure our pano fits. And, and you can do this with a panorama head, but... I uh, I went very, very basic today. The light is fleeting, but it's okay. I think we'll still have enough captured.
Most of the action here on Sparks Lake happens on the Ray Atkinson Trail. In case you guys are new to the area and want to know about it, you go to the parking lot and then you go south. And that trail hugs the south jetty and then it winds for about a mile up to that butte right there. But it's the first 500 to 1,000 feet is when the action happens and where we got our cool reflections you saw. Or where you saw those cool reflections. So, And we're going to walk over there along that trail. And this is pretty much where everyone shoots at Sparks Lake. If you're a photographer, you go here. <laughs> and this is right along the Ray Atkinson Trail. You can see you don't have to do very much. Just really any spot works. Like right here is really cool. Just go along like this. Down there shooting. And then it starts winding back into the forest. So we're headed to another spot. I'm going to show you if you're going to shoot Sparks Lake. This is actually my favorite spot, the one that I prefer, because it's more enclosed. It's not as wide. And instead of um, really two mountains at once, you have one at a time that you can focus on. Comment below. Let me know if any of you have ever done this, if you've ever gone the other way around to avoid crowds. <laughs> I can't be the only one. I really can't, so... Really, I'm bushwhacking through the trees to see if I can get around them because they're taking up the whole beach. Comment below, let me know if I'm not crazy. So, here's the other spot I was talking about you can shoot here on Sparks Lake aside from the uh, Atkinson Trail. It's actually a really open spot. This is actually my favorite spot simply because you have, in my opinion, a lot more compositional material. I mean, you can get both mountains at once here, but what I like best about it is you can single out, you know, South Sister there. You can single out Broken Top, and you have all these really cool compositions looking that way. It's a really versatile spot that I don't think is utilized a lot until now. <laughs> so, um... I've taken quite a bit of really cool shots here at this uh, spot. And this one's right at the parking lot. You just walk like 100, 200 feet. And there's a beach right there that you can shoot from. It's, it can accommodate a pretty good group of photogs. So I just wanted to show you the other spot, the other option at Sparks Lake that you can get. Check that one out. As we move down the beach, you can see how the composition has come into play here. How it opens up quite a bit, you know. You have this really cool log, really cool foregrounds even right here. So there's really a lot you can do at this particular spot that I like over at Gisson Trail. Because really, logs and stuff here pretty cool cold hand syndrome I have a hot cup of coffee waiting for me in the car so if you like this video please like and subscribe down below also follow me at Stanley Paul photo on Instagram or Follow my work, all kinds of cool stuff, puns, blogs, videos at stanleypaulphoto.com. So in the meantime, I leave you with this awesome view of Miss South Sister and Mr. Broken Top, a view to remember. And here are the photos taken on this trip. We'll see you cool cats later. Bye-bye.